Today we're going to be looking at a first person replay of mine. And I'm going to be playing the Ottoman. I rolled random into this, and I'll explain why in a second. My opponent's going to be playing the HRE on the other side of uh, Lipany here. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. The premise of this game slash video was that I wanted to see what I could get away with uh, based off of mechanics alone. And that is to say that my build is going to be bad and it's not going to be adapted to the Ottoman civilization. Uh, I'm already opening up with two scouts, which is not the worst thing in the world uh, for Ottoman. I did it because HRE, uh, you want to deny as much cheap as possible, possible but uh, in this case uh, I wasn't really able to do that with these uh, two scouts. And so again, uh, my premise is to explore how do I handle this game uh, with a not so good uh, build order. Because uh, moving forward on this channel, what I uh, would like to really, really explore is the development of a player. Now, there are so many different things that make up a player. You have their game knowledge, you have their mechanics, you have you know their micro, their macro. You have their understanding of the game, their decision making, their mental game, all of these good and wonderful things. And I would like to deconstruct each aspect of what makes a player good and try to focus, try to zoom in on, on each and every one of them. So for today, what I'm going to be doing is focusing on, more than anything else, my mechanics. And uh, the best player that I have uh, for this study is going to be myself. So. This is a journey of improvement, so to say. And, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been, you know, watching the videos of Beastie Cutie and uh, Ostrongo, and I think that they have excellent, excellent advice in those videos. Uh, where they say, you know, stick to one civilization and really try to, like, flesh it out, make it nice and crisp, nice and clean, and uh, do your best from there on out. And I think that's really sound advice. Uh, I definitely think that if you were to uh, uh, just one-trick a civilization, you're really going to be able to develop your mechanics uh, nice and quickly, nice and easily. Now, I'm at a point as a player, though, where I, I'm actually interested in, in approaching this in a different manner. And the reason for that is because uh, I'm, one of the, my weaknesses in my games when I'm tryharding is, you know, I'm, I'm so focused on the build order, I'm so focused on scouting, I'm so focused on my opponent that I do things like skip villagers, I get housed, uh, I do all these, you know, bad things. So my idea here is to take it from the top and just focus on the basics, the basics of the basics. And, you know, it may seem, you know, a little bit boring almost to, you know, say, you know, just focus on your villager, villager production, focus on your housing, focus on all that stuff. Actually, uh, it's a little bit more in-depth than that. Uh, good mechanics and good decision-making also entails uh, looking at a situation on the battlefield and recognizing whether or not you can take or not take a fight. It's knowing when to retreat. It's knowing when to age. <clears throat> it's knowing what you can get away with. And one of the nice things as well when you're playing this sort of off-meta style is that you get to experiment a little bit. Imagine just a, you know, that mad scientist in his lab. Uh, I'm actually gonna check, make sure I'm recording. Yes, we are. Making sure that we're not muted, perfect. <laughs> but just imagine a mad scientist in his lab, just tinkering around and, and, and playing around with his different, you know, beakers and whatever until he finds like that winning formula or whatever. And this is kind of going to apply to Age of Empires IV as well. Am I messing around right now? I totally am. I'm going to do one town center ottoman fast for, uh, fast castle. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, that's not really what you're supposed to do with the ottoman civilization. You're supposed to go for this like elite 420 uh, archer push where you, you just barrel uh, your opponent with feudal age archers and, and whatever. Cool. I want to just tinker around a little bit and win or lose, it doesn't really matter because I want to see like what happens. I'm like that cat that pushes, you know, that, that plant off the ledge, just to see exactly what's going to happen to that plant. <laughs> well, in this case, you know, I'm going to go one town center uh, ottoman. I'm going to go for a fast castle, and we're going to kind of see how it pan how it pans out. <clears throat> and already, I can I can say that it's probably not going 
to do too well for me. This is because obviously this is off meta. It's not Ottoman's strongest build. But at the same time, do we really know that? I, I want to see how that how that works. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pick up uh, Wheelbarrow as well as the uh, improved pickaxe uh, right off the bat. Uh, just so that I have a nice healthy gold income in the Castle Age. Uh, you know, we're going to be gathering 600 gold for the... Uh, for the age up but then after that we're also going to be getting some blacksmith upgrades we're going to be getting some economic upgrades and then we're going to make be making some like gold heavy units such as knights so uh in this like little pseudo build order that i've come up with uh which is again not a real build my idea is to you know i'm just going to get my mining upgrades my first vizier point is also going to be uh the uh mongolian heights or whatever it is no what's it called again <laughs> i don't know Kind of, kind of going off script here, but uh, it's going to be the sheep and the and the ten percent mining uh, vizier point, and that is going to allow me to just stack a little bit of mining and, uh, upgrades, and what and then I'll be able to just flourish my economy a little bit more with a focus on those economic upgrades. I think it's going to be quite powerful uh, moving forward in the meta. Now, my opponent, as we can see here, is going to go for a two town center uh, fast castle. Now, I don't know that he's going fast castle, but I haven't scouted any military buildings, so I, and he's HRE, and HRE definitely love their castle agenda, so we can make that fairly safe assumption uh, that this is going to be in the castle age. So, what does that mean? That means that I'm going to be up to castle sooner. By the way, the level of this game, uh, I'd say probably about 1200, 1250 maybe. Uh, my opponent was a uh, was a, the solid diamond in season 2, uh, so take it as you will. Uh, again, not the highest level, but whatever. I, I don't care about, like, tryharding all the way up to Kunk. If I wanted to do that, I would just take one civilization and stick to it. Right now, I'm interested in tinkering around. Uh, and also, it's fun. It's fun. It's a little bit more laid back. So to get back to what I was saying, uh, we don't have any infrastructure here for HRE, so they're going to be going up to the Castle Age. I'm going to be up there sooner than them, because I... I'm doing a one ten town center fast castle, and they are going for a two town center fast castle. So I should be able to get up to the next stage a little bit faster than them. That means that I'm going to have units out, castle age units out on the field uh, faster than them. And my goal is to try to utilize uh, that, that timing window uh, to do some things. We're going to be looking to kill villagers. We're going to be looking to kill units. And at this point, there is definitely some pressure on us, uh, because again, this is two town center versus one town center. Uh, so we are going to have to do a fair amount of damage uh, pretty quickly and kind of either stunt their economic growth or take map control or get some other advantage because they will be getting a villager lead uh, here. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to have to play around. Uh, but... In the meantime, uh, I'm fairly comfortable. I've got my, uh, I've got a lot of sheep. I've got the twin minerai midrees. Uh, that's also giving me a lot of food, and this is going to allow me to get my, uh, my knight production going. Again, remember that I have stacked uh, the first pickaxe upgrade for mining, and then I also have the uh, vizier point in there. So my mining villagers are actually doing quite well for themselves. We're going to be picking up some upgrades, uh, both economic and blacksmith. And again, this is a very upgrade-heavy playstyle. And not a villager-focused playstyle. Long term, I don't think there's a question that the two town center uh, play will do better. Uh, but for the time being, you know, I'm I'm playing for the short game. I'm playing for the uh, for now, and so I'm going to be having a pretty quick power spike. You'll notice that my uh, opponent has done a pretty good job scouting a little bit what I'm doing. <clears throat> One of the nice things about playing off meta and tinkering around <laughs> is that your opponent generally has no idea what the hell you're doing, and in this case, I'm going to be going for some knights, and he's going to have to kind of think on his feet a little bit and maybe adapt out of his build order, and that will slow him down just a little bit. We're going to turn on uh, the, uh, what are we going to turn on? The uh, health bars, yes, because when I make thumbnails, I turn them off, and then I always forget to turn them back on, <laughs> and we finally have health bars 9 minutes and 30 seconds into the game, because that's just how passive this game has been up until now. We're going to get some ranged armor because I want to run my knights around underneath his town centers. Uh, he is up to the next stage. And uh, we're going to have to deal with <clears throat> um, HRE in the next stage. We're, we're not too sure what exactly he went with yet. Uh, but we're going to have to play around that. And we're going to have to be careful uh, because we definitely could get 
uh, burgraved with uh, some men at arms here. But for the time being, you know, we've got some knights out in the field and we're going to be uh, uh, aggressive with them. All right, so we're looking for some villagers right now. And again, notice my housing. I'm pretty good at housing. I'm pretty good at villager production. And this is the... Uh, I don't know why I got that vizier point, by the way. I didn't even make a military school in this game. <laughs> but uh, so far, so good. Um, we have good villager production. We have not been housed. Uh, I'm going to pull back a little bit. Uh, actually, I'm not. And uh, we're, yeah, we're just going to try to find some damage over these knights. Getting close to housed now... I'm actually going to lose that knight right there. That's a little bit unfortunate. I think if I had been a little bit sharper this game, I wouldn't have lost it, but that's okay. So we're just going to run around with the knights. And again, we're just going to focus on villager production. We're going to focus on being active with our units. And so far, so good. I mean, the build order is bad, but we've been playing fairly mechanically well. You'll notice that we're spending our resources very nicely. We're getting our barracks. We're getting our housing. Uh, we're being active with our units. <clears throat> we're taking fights all over the place. Uh, this is some pretty good rating on my end. Uh, because, again, I, I'm actually on top of pretty much all of my units, except for that one knight that died right there. So right there, we're going to pull back a little bit. And uh, just running a, just running him around a little bit with those knights is, is going to be quite nice for us at this point. Um, and now we're going to switch into men-at-arms, because we have sort of forced like a, a spearman response. Uh, also, a little bit more mechanical micro right there. Very nice indeed. Again, this is a this is like recognizing when you can and cannot uh, take these fights. And this is a this is a fun play style. It's it's off beat. It's off the beaten path. Uh, I I you know there's no real pressure to win or not win because you know this is like what a secondary account and I don't even think it's like that very it's not very high. And we're we're just gonna play it out. Nice and easy, we're just going to play it out. Look, we're still spending our resources, uh, our housing is good, we're doing good, nice micro. Uh, the villager queue is good, and we're getting some men-at-arms in there. And, and, you know, this is perfect, this is exactly what we want. We just want to play a nice, clean game. When I try hard, and I don't know if this is apply applicable to you as well, but when I try hard, right now, uh, if I were in try hard mode, I might be like flustered. I'm like, okay, he's on two town centers, I need to kill him like as soon as possible. I need to raid villagers, I need to do all these things. But now, because we don't have like that nefarious mindset of, of needing like agency on our opponent like immediately and whatever, no, we're just going to play it nice and easy. We recognize that we can't take that fight, so we're going to retreat. We recognize that the raids have been good, so we're going to fight that. And again, we're just going to play it out. Play it out nice and easy. Our villager allocation is nice. We have a 22 on food. Again, we're spamming a lot of men at arms right now. Uh, we've cut back on the knight production just because he's going pure spearmen, so there's no... I don't know, no real need to get like too many knights out. Uh, we have a few, so that's going to be enough for uh, raiding purposes. But right now I'm going to switch into men at arms, and this is going to force him to either make uh, his own men at arms, or maybe crossbowmen or something else of the sort. But right now, for the time being, I'm making a lot of men at arms into pure spearmen, and I'm feeling pretty, pretty good about that. Uh, and again. Housing is good. Villager is good. Again, we're just I'm just keeping an eye on, on, on the economic situation. We're getting the upgrades in as well. We're getting the blacksmith upgrades. We're dumping all of that gold into upgrades. So the build order is horrendous. But again, everything else is going really well for ourselves. And I would say um, that if, if I had a better build order, this would be... Uh, maybe this would be a win by now. I don't know. But we're not focusing on the win so much as we are like just uh, th this is the first game that i've played in like a week <laughs> and, I, and, I, and i'm not trying to think about what i'm doing i'm trying to just play clean win or lose it doesn't matter i'm just gonna play clean <clears throat> don't pursue the win uh, i just i just don't i think it's so kind of productive and i'm gonna circle back to that topic uh on this channel whether or not you should be looking for those wins or not, um, or should you be looking to just like just play the game a little bit, you know? So this is quite nice. Now we do have a nice flank coming in. Now we have some spearmen. We have some lance connect in there as well. Uh, I attacked move in, in that direction, but they uh, went for that spearman instead. So now I think I'm going to lose that mangonel. The mangonel bugged out. I don't know why it wouldn't attack. I think it's because it was too close to the units. Uh, but now uh, that, that's, uh, that's a tricky little fight for me right there. I definitely got flanked a little bit. But again, nice thing. 
this is perfect mechanics. I'm not going to look at the fight. There's not too much I can do anymore. All of my uh, men at arms and whatever are in the right position. So there's no real need to look at that fight. So instead, I'm going to go fix my economy. I'm going to go rally my units. I'm going to make sure that my upgrades are coming in, that my production is good. And I'm going to take care of everything else that's on the map right now. And I'll let my units just kind of fend for themselves for the time being. And then I'll come back to them. And then I'll look at the situation and I'll readjust it. This is one of the beautiful things with men at arms. And if you're looking to like... Uh, pub stomp a little bit. Men at arms are like the unit of choice. Uh, they do not require micro as much as like a knight, for example. A knight will get, um, you know, poked down by spearmen pretty quickly. However, a men at arm, unless you're fighting uh, a lot of crossbowmen, I, I, you're free to kind of just let them do, do their own thing. And so again, uh, we're doing a really good job here. We're not looking at the fight uh, earlier. We weren't looking at the fight. We were just fixing our economy, and that's one of the hallmarks of good mechanics. Villager production. Fix your economy. Make sure it's smooth. Uh, we're not. Don't try hard too much. Don't don't try to like uh, be the next you know Flash or Serral or or whatever. Just try to play a nice clean game. I think that's the. That was my mindset going into this game. Like win or lose, whatever. Uh, I just want. I want a video for, for content for YouTube, but I also want to just focus on my mechanics more than anything else. And at this point, uh, my economy is all good to go, so I'm free to sit on top of my men at arms a little bit and, and micro them a little right there. Perfect. Nice and easy. And then we just pick up the nice easy W. And it's very nice. It's very clean. It was a very pleasant game to play. Uh, Nothing crazy, you know, and I, I think this is one of the, my favorite approaches for playing Age of Empires 4.